What's up everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. Making lots of videos today. I'm making up for the last month or two where I haven't made a darn thing. And um, I want to talk to you guys about um, basically what I have been um, doing with the EPG. How, how we're supposed to look at this thing and how it's supposed to work. Okay. A while back I um, told you guys to read the um, dealership manual because it had some information in it. That was very important and um, you know I've mentioned this device being somewhat of a, a particle accelerator I've mentioned it I've always said primary coils and things like this but there's there's a lot of things going on here that are that need to be discussed and I'm not going to go through all the information because what I what I really want you to do is read the dealership manual because it has all the answers so I, I don't need to do that um, so I'm not going to do that I'm going to pull up a few pictures here. There we go. EPG. All right, we can talk about these. Um, definitely, always, go read the dealership manual. Okay. Things acting funny. Okay. So, read the dealership manual, and uh, you'll uh, have all the questions answered, but I'm going to try to explain this to you. Um, I also want to talk about the uh, ionizer and the gas gun and such so stay tuned if you think you've already heard this information got some other information to talk about you talk about to you all right so I constantly keep calling this a primary coil and theoretically it's not a primary coil um, in my opinion after all the research I've done this is a magnetic device at certain properties when you're using argon iron nickel or cobalt it is a magnetic device okay when you're using um, hydrogen and oxygen it may be some sort of a electrical conducting device and it's different so depending on the type of gas you're putting in it it's going to be different let's just go with this photo oh that's weird there we go um, all right so forever and ever and ever I've been calling these the primary coils and theoretically they are the primary coils um, in my opinion this was also not just a way to produce electricity but also a way to, to produce a certain frequency of pulses and what I want to tell you guys is I know I've been calling these a primary but in theory this pump whether it be magnetic or uh, a turbine pump it is the primary source of energy input now what these coils do okay think about this if you have a magnetic gas lattice okay and it's coming in through here alright this what this coil does is align it it keeps it aligned because as soon as it comes through here in this impeller it's gonna get like all screwed up within this propeller it's not gonna be a uh, lattice anymore alright and then it comes out all messed up and wham right here polarizing coils that's what these are these are polarizing coils they keep the magnetic gas in a polarized form in a lattice so as soon as it comes out it's in a lattice it goes around 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 comes back in to the bottom here and voila this holds everything between this point and this point it holds it in a gas lattice form okay and then this will obviously destroy the thing um, so on the multi pulse um, I want to talk about this one actually because this is probably a better example um, on the multi-stage pulse here um, this device if you look in the patents I wish I had all this information dug up but I don't apologize but if you look in the in the patents and you also look in the um, especially in the dealership manual you'll find all those diagrams that you can't read in some of Stan's lectures they're all in that so make sure you read it I'll link it and I'll link the uh, all the data to the form in here as well in the description box but these are polarizing coils not only do they polarize they are also the primary source of fluid movement okay which unlike the pump red pump this is the pump but it's an electromagnetic pump but it also aligns the coils I mean excuse me aligns the gas the coils align the gas and it keeps it lined up I've kinda of been saying some stuff in the, in the, in the past that maybe I need to correct and I, that's why I'm doing this I've actually been wanting to make a video such as this for about a month and a half and I haven't just sat down and collected all my data and I apologize for that uh, let me dig up well yeah we can dig it up I guess okay guys I'm gonna show you how to get to the documents 
I'm going to just go ahead and pull it up for you. So you go to rwgresearch.com. You can do this two ways. The easiest way is to come over here into the sidebar. And all the stuff's laid out that I have on my website. I will be updating my website with all the new stuff because it's pretty lagging behind. But I'm only one guy. Um, so I haven't had a lot of time. So scroll down here. And you'll see where it starts. It says Stan Myers Waffles uh, Fuel Cell Tech. And it'll pop out. All right, come down here to Patents and Documents. All right, scroll back out. Um, and the second one on the list, Stanley's Dealership Manual. I also have some new information to put on this documents page. And so we will, uh, I will update you on those. Uh, I guess Tony had somehow gotten a hold of the rest of the, um, uh, what are they, the... Um, different uh, newsletters and so I'm gonna upload those on my website as well they're over on his website right now globalcast.com and da 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 we'll let this load and as soon as it's done loading we'll be back and we're back so here is the document it is the dealership manual and we scroll down here and we get down here into the into the um, new way of producing electricity somewhere down in here and you will find the EPG and there it is and this is actually the diagram I was looking for I'm gonna turn the camera so you guys actually have a straight view of this so right here we have the EPG. This is a multi-layered one, actually. This is the one, that multi-layered one I just showed you. And what we have here is a programmable pulsing circuit, electronic. And you have each wire hooked up to each coil. All right, and you can see that the um, this actually, well, here right there, power input moves gas only. It moves gas only, okay? So that's what I've been trying to mention, um, that it's not, it's a magnetic pump and not an electrical input. All right, same as this, all right? Power input moves gas only. There it is again. Um, and then there is a couple more pictures here. There's the, there, look at that. There's the multi-stage EPG, okay? And there's your programmable pulse input, AC or DC input, probably converts it to DC for our, um, there's our electromagnetic pump assembly. That one looks like it's actually on the bottom, isn't it? it hooked up on the bottom. Um, so again, please read this and look through it. Um, there's the gas accelerator. This is the same thing. This is just probably a single coil or something. Um, all this information is there. Okay, so go look at it and read it. Right here it is. Dynamic ways to produce electricity. That's the chapter. Chapter 8, PDF page 88. Okay? So go look that up. Now, that being said, this is a polarizing device. Okay? And a gas moving device. This is the primary input, but it's not electrical input. It's magnetic movement and gas alignment. Okay? That's what I've been trying to, to inform people lately, and I just haven't had time to make the video. So next comes the ionization and the um, of argon, and also the breaking down of nails to iron ions. We want iron ions, okay? Or cobalt or nickel ions. How the heck do we do this? Well, been working on this, and here's what I got to say. Two things. Um, one is definitely a polarized arc of some sort, in my opinion. Um, and also, the other thing we have to know is that we have to have a high voltage arc. We also have to have some way of keeping the nails from oxidizing. Okay? He states in his patents that it is a vacated chamber. Okay? A vacated chamber. This means a chamber with nothing in it theoretically. Not just empty, but with nothing in it. it. means no air as well. 
That's my opinion on this. Um, we can maybe it's argon, argon, maybe it's an, uh, argon in a vacuum or something. But nonetheless, it's definitely a vacuum. So I plan on actually taking apart. I've got some of these um, old air conditioners my father gave me. There's actually a condensing unit down there, and I've also got three more over here, which actually still work. So I'm going to keep them together. Um, okay. So I'm going to be taking a vacuum pump out of an air compressor sorry, out of an air conditioner, and I'm going to be using it as a vacuum source. Now, how are you going to vacuum out a chamber and then um, not pull all the ions out of it? Well, uh, yeah, so how are you going to do that? Well, you need to seal the chamber, in my opinion. So you seal the chamber under a vacuum, you create some sort of a vacuum tube, and you seal it. You have to seal it because it won't hold a vacuum. Vacuum is very hard to hold, unless you have a sealed chamber, completely sealed, glass or some sort. So this chamber, I'm going to be doing some tests this weekend. And basically, these um, are going to be vaporized under a vacuum, and this will create a much better arc because I'm under a vacuum, and I have, and the gases don't have anywhere to go. So we can sit this thing under a vacuum and let it arc all day long, and then we'll, at the end of it, eventually we'll burn our nails down. Current, high current, high amperage, uh, high voltage arc will break it down under a vacuum. No oxidation. We do not want oxidation. Oxidation becomes a chemical process and we lose what we're trying to do. Okay? That's the plan. These are 99% 99, uh, 99 pure cobalt. And um, Russell sent me those. Much, much, much appreciation there. And we'll be possibly trying those, but we're going to be doing some other experiments before we get into these with iron nails and stuff. Um, the last thing I must say really quickly, and I'm probably running out of time, so here we go. I plan on taking a lot of these flyback transformers and actually connecting them all up and creating a high DC output. I don't know why I didn't think of this. It must be a dummy. But those produce a DC voltage potential. Okay? Positive DC voltage potential. And if I hook up a whole bunch of those, I'm going to get a lot of current and I'm going to get a really big arc. That's the plan. I'm going to have to make some driver circuits for those and um, um, that's that's kind of the plan. Now I will be using just standard high voltage for my experiments this weekend, but I think that's going to be the plan is doubling up a bunch of those. We're going to have a heck of an arc and it's going to be DC. That's it. DC. That's the important thing in my opinion. Russ out. I got to go. I'm out of time. God bless you all. Have a good day. Leave me a comment. Please leave it over at the forums. See you guys.